Hello world and welcome back. I'm Karhu the Great Bear of the North and this is Europa Universalis IV, the most serene kingdom. We are Venice as you know. And there were two questions I posed to you in the last episode. One, our naval doctrine. Which we go? We have, um, I, I personally, I quite enjoy Hormaz, but in addition, I quite enjoy a uh, chance to capture enemy ships, the ship boarding one, but you guys suggested Merchant Navy, which makes sense considering we are Venice, so uh, just this will dramatically increase our trade income. Something else, Whoa, let's drop that down a little bit, um, and also let's mothball some forts while we're at it. There we go, that should save us a chunk of change. Um, is religion. And I asked whether or not we should go Protestant. Um, not Reformed, that wasn't on the table, just Protestant, because there's a center of Reformation in Crane. And you guys voted, and I just checked his vote now, 27 in favor of Protestant and 23 in favor of Catholic. So I will go Protestant, but here's the catch. We're going to wait until these provinces actually start to convert. We're not just going to go whole hog right now. I mean, yeah, Lika and Agrano and Varajdin um, have converted, as is Istria. But uh, for real, once Venice converts, specifically even if our uh, if our ruler, Marco Tiepolo, converts, then we will go and and do that. But let's, let's, um, let's remove our guy from Hungary. We don't need him anymore. And can we even claim anything else from Florence? No, no. What we want to do is we want to improve relations with Austria. I think they're going to be a key early Reformation um, ally for us, because right now they are minus 63, and a lot of that is, to be fair, minus 66 is aggressive expansion. Um, but they're still, oh, they're still technically Catholic. They're still technically Catholic, but um, we also want to increase our relationship. Plus 140 relationship with Poland that should be pretty good in order to maintain those alliances. What about France? Plus 172 and Castile plus 121. We should be okay on... Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to bother with Czechy right now. That's too far. Our relations with them are too far removed for it to really, really matter. Uh, military access from the, pap from the papacy. Yeah, we'll give them that, which will make it even funnier when we completely denounce their authority. I'm really looking forward to that. Czechy has entered a military coalition against us. Who who all is in this military coalition? Let's see. Um, right now it's just Czechy. That's not bad. That's not bad. But Poland loves us. France loves us. Castile loves us. We will, however, lose a lot of prestige when we eventually convert. So we will see. Difficulties in the role in the rule of the sea brought further changes. Until 1545, the oarsmen in the galleys were free sailors and rolled on a wage. They were originally Venetians, but later Dalmatians, Cretans, and Greeks joined in large numbers. Because of the difficulty in hiring success sufficient crews, Venice had recourse to conscription, chaining the oarsmen to the benches as other navies had already done. Cristoforo da Canal was the first Venetian to command such a gallery. What shall we do? It is against the Republic. Not that we are a Republic anymore, but it is against the spirit of Venice. Because even though Venice is a monarchy, even though we are a kingdom, I'm still going to rule it um, in the spirit of the Republic. Very much um, kind of like the Dutch monarchical republic kind of a thing. That's kind of what we're going for here. Um, naval force limit modifier plus 10%, but stability cost modifier plus 5 No, we're going to gain one stability. Stability is good. We are now at three stability, which is fantastic. Which is fantastic. And another thing that we were talking about at the end of the last episode, or rather I was talking about, y'all were listening. Um, there will be blood. Madeberg is going to attack Cole. Fantastic. Um, now the ghetto. Beginning in 1516, the Republic obliged the Jews to live in an area of the city where the foundry is known in the Venetian as Getty had been situated in ancient times, to wear a sign of identification and to manage the city's pawn shops at rates established by the Serenissima. Many other onerous, onerous regulations were also included in exchange for which the community was granted the freedom to practice its faith and protection in the case of war. What shall we do? Now, I mentioned this a couple of episodes ago. I think it was episode 9 on the Sestiari of Venice. And um, this is where we're going to make a dramatic departure from history, at least in terms of Venice. Not in my Venice. 
simply because um, I don't like the concept of segregation in terms of religious identity or 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 ethnic identity or or any kind of an entity on the, on those grounds. I think people should be free to live where they choose to live. If they choose to live in a small community of like-minded people, that's up to them. But to force them to do it, I'm not a big fan of that. So this is just, you know, my own personal politics squeaking through. Uh, gain 10 people influence, gain 50 administrative power, which is, again, going to be even funnier when the Pope... <laughs> when we basically turn around and... Um, decry the Pope. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to try to influence the Pope. And I know this is going to seem awkward, but we're going to try to influence the Pope. And if we don't become the next Pope, then we will cry foul and switch to your Protestant. I also, um, I want one of these centers of reformation. I want, I want Rome to become Protestant. That would be amazing. Ragus is no part of our patrimony. Fantastic. We're making a lot. We're making quite a bit of cash, quite a bit of cash. Um, Yeah, what I was saying was, um, was about the Ottomans. Uh, they're currently in a uh, war against Portugal, Castile, Aragon, and Naples. Um, and the question is, do we take this moment to attack them? We don't have any diplomats right now, but you know what, let's... France plus 186, that should be pretty good. So let's... We could only bring in France, because Poland is in debt. And Castile is already at war, and the papacy... The papacy likes them. Jerks. Um, but we will go to war with Tunis as well. And that's... Um, if we had Poland, I would say yes, absolutely, 100% join this war. But without Poland... I'm not sure we can do this. I'm really not sure we can do this. Um, we only have 12,000 men. I mean, this seems like it's such a good good opportunity to join and, and start smashing these guys down. But they do have a, a massive... They do have a military advantage. They have a massive naval advantage. Like, I'm the second highest naval power in the world, and they double, double my size. Um, I mean, even, even Altarkia is is... I mean, they're not at war with anybody, but if they were to go to war with Ottomans, if, like, if, if somebody were, if we were to start just all, you know, ganging up on the Ottomans, I would, I would enjoy that. Almost joined a trade league, trade league led by Ragusa. And that's fun. That's fun. Um, yeah. The military leaders left us. Okay. Oh, hi. Whoa, 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 whoa. We are actually losing people in here. So let's split that in two. I didn't realize that uh, supply limit dropped. Oh, mild winter. That's part of it. All right. Well, um, importing iron. We strive to keep the Venetian military strong, modern, and domestically supported, but sometimes our priorities end up in conflict with each other. Lacking the rich iron mines of our neighbors, some of our grander plans for future military development will not be possible as soon as we might wish. Increasing imports is a tempting option, but relying on foreign support might compromise our trade policies, although a knife in the back of our neighbor would be all the more brilliantly insidious if made from their own steel. We need imported iron first. Alterkia's opinion goes up. 60 military power is nothing to sneeze at, but neither is mercantilism. We need to rely on our own resources. Heart matters more than iron, and the reason mercantilism is good is every point of mercantilism Every point of mercantilism, so this would give us two, gives us two points of provincial trade power modifier. So this will give us 4% provincial trade power modifier, which is great. And embargo efficiency will go up by 1%. Well, by half a percent per point, so we'd get two points, so 1%. Don't really care about embargoing all that much because it hurts my own trade. But that mercantilism, I mean, the 60 military, military power for two mercantilism, two mercantilism, easy. So no, we're going to feed our armies with our own iron. I mean, we have iron somewhere. All right, we need to um, also, we need to build up Ragusa's gold. 
There we go. Let's build that up again. It's a convenience now part of our patrimony. Let's... Uh, Luca. Luca. Not Lucha. Luca. Thank you. Uh, it's entered a military coalition against us. All right. Um, separatists in Tripoli. Uh, in Bosnia. Yeah, we got a lot of, we've got a lot of unrest. Oh, King Marco's now kind-hearted. He seems like he's a decent human being. Just kind-hearted, but, um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, let's get some trade. Oh, yes, we're definitely building a marketplace in Venice. Plus eight trade at an end node. Thank you. I'm glad. We Whoa, Savoya has ended... Smoggy, Bosna, oh. Okay, so, um, can we still claim that? Do we still have enough? Oh yeah, we totally have enough spy network to claim Smoggy. Even though I don't really care about Smoggy, I want Lika, just to connect everything. Everything south of the Danube is pretty much, I know this is the Danube too, but everything south of this river is uh, basically what I want. How are the Ottomans doing? They're actually winning against Portugal, Castile, Aragon, and Naples. Uh, military engineer Stefan Petrovich has died. Let's see what we can get. Discipline plus five, morale of armies, or land force limit modifier. We're definitely we're making 15.26 gold. Two gets per turn. I will spend five of those to get to get this. And land force limit modifier will be increased. Fantastic. This is very, very good. Good, 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 good. Now, how are we doing in terms of... We're still over on label force limit. Um, let's build a couple barks to increase our trade in Ragusa. I believe it is Ragusa. That's... Uh, no, it's Venice. I think they're protecting trade in Venice. Come on, click, click. Truce with Milan has expired. They're protecting trade in... Protecting trade node Venice. Yeah, so adding a couple extra galleys to that, especially now that we have the trade power modifier, it is very, very good. Barraged is now considered part of our patrimony. Good. Improve relations with Osterreich. Um, we'll actually maintain that diplomat. Czechy loves us. Can we get in? Uh, oh, no, no, that's not Czechy. That's Poland loves us. Um, so let's increase our improve relations with France. And the Spanish are getting their butts kicked by the Ottomans. Um, even Portugal. This is not going well for them. I'm not going to join this war because it'll probably just lead to, to me getting my butt kicked as well. And I don't think the Ottomans are going to take any territory in Iberia or anything like that. Um, but Al Maghrib might actually take Naples, which means we could take Naples from Al Maghrib. That would be fun. That would be fun, I think. But for now, we're just chilling letting our treasury go up, letting us build things. We're not going to convert any provinces to Catholic because we might be um, converting to Protestant soon anyways. Oh, there's a near, another center of reformation. Um, now, what we, we, we want a center of reformation. We want a center of reformation. So let's... I said that we would wait. I said that we would wait. Lose 100 prestige. Gain 387 ducats. Center of Reformation could appear in a European province. And we'll get mission religious zeal. Boom. Protestant Venice. Fantastic. And these things will start to convert really, really quickly. So let's convert Venice right off the bat. And select the aspects of faith. This is brand new to me. I don't know... Anything about those aspects of faith, really, church power. Um, religious unity is really low, so we're going to get some rebels. We're going to get a lot of rebels. Um, but hey, whatever. Let's build some churches. Let's build a, uh, or, or, or trade. Let's build some trade. There we go. Just increase our trade power up here in our home node a little bit. There we go. Uh, we probably want to end up building up barracks. Oh, and a manufactory would be so nice. Um, but let's keep that money just in case we need to... Uh, we need to deal with things, which we'll probably need to deal with. 
you know, things. Things happen. Um, but we do have some rebel uprisings in Bosnia. So let's increase our army maintenance. Let's get these guys leadered up. Okay. Australia has entered a military coalition against us. That's... But I thought you guys, you guys are totally going to become Protestant too. We didn't even get... Friul is a Protestant center of reformation. And this is brilliant. Because as I mentioned in the past, Friul and Udine is the center of Aquileia. And as far as the Venetians are concerned, they see Aquileia as as a holy see founded by St. Peter. So we actually have a center of reformation in the territory that has the throne of St. Peter. This is brilliant. Uh, throne of St. Mark, I apologize. So you have the throne of St. Peter and the throne of St. Mark. This is beautiful. I couldn't have asked for a better... Uh, uh, a better place to have to have that. Um, yeah, so I mean, our, our relations with France and, um, and Poland dropped a little bit. That's okay, it's still, it's still 149 with France. It's still 157 with Poland. And, wow, the Pope isn't even going to disavow our alliance yet. That's awesome. I like that. Even the Pope is still friends with us. Trevijo was converted to province, uh, to, to Protestant. This is due to the center of reformation in Friuli. And Venice is almost there. Boom! Oh, I th totally thought that was the month. Alright. Um, Bosnia separatists in Herzegovina. Oh boy. Um, can we get one of these guys away? Just get them out of the war. Yeah, we can. Um, Visoki. If we slide these guys into Visoki, that would make Visoki no longer part of the Rebel Alliance. Then Travon Travonia cannot be changed. Um, all right, but hey, at least Visoki won't be contributing rebels to this uprising, which totally was supposed to happen. Otherwise, now I'm just losing manpower because of uh, military access from Aragon and Portugal. Oh, no, I don't have, I don't care about either of them. Um, so let's see what's happening in Portugal. Oh, well, apparently Portugal's, uh, turning this around, I guess. Um, Neapolitan pretender rebels. Naples, ooh, ooh. Oh, Naples is still a junior partner of Castile. Because if we could start taking Naples, that would be delicious. Venice is now. Military access from Castile, yes. Venice is now Protestant. Excellent, let's just start converting people. Good. Um, come on, Bosnia, just rebel. I'm wasting manpower just sitting here. Come on. Oh man, really guys? Okay, we can invest in new technology. We can invest in the Cortez. Production efficiency minus 20, uh, plus 20%. Good. Now the problem with the hereditary local nobility is that they tend to value their local interests over those of the rest of the nation. We need to steadily expand the reach of the government, which begins with the most important area of administration. Justice, number of states plus three can now build a courthouse. Fan diddly tastic. Fan diddly tastic. Um, act of uniformity. Venice gets act of uniformity, missionary strength plus one, institution embracement cost plus ten. Nope. Not doing that. I mean, my missionary efficiency, I mean, we are getting the, the bonus for, oh, there we go, there's the, there's the rebellion. Um, let's merge these guys together. Boom, 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 boom. Herman of Hesse is the new emperor. Naples has entered, oh, Naples is independent, but they are, oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. Do we still have claims on Naples? I don't think we have any claims on Naples. I mean, they are in a coalition against us. They didn't exist. They didn't exist as an independent nation when we did all that stuff. But hey. But hey. Um, let's see. Now it's Tripoli is in Cert. We can actually end that. And in Mantua and Varaged. You know what? Let's just do it this way. Where's Mantua? 
There we go. Those two rebellions are over. Ragusa, we can also get rid of. And I know, I know I shouldn't be doing this. Heresy. But, uh, but it is what we're doing. And we're not getting anything from Cert anyways. Let's just end those rebellions because then we can modify this all the way down. And everything is good on that front. Whew. Augsburg has joined a trade league. All right. And there should be no provincial unrest in Smerevo, Vishalki, and Belgrado. That's fine. That's fine. That's a little bit of Bosnian separatists. Whatever. I'm fine with this. I'm fine with this. This is good. This is good. So, so we are Protestant. We're making money. Adriana, we've converted to the true faith. Let's continue to convert people. This is, this is fun. And church power is 15 plus 1.03 each month. And once we get, we need a hundred church power to apply another aspect. Organized through bishops, uh, adult baptism, holy sacraments, saints accept prayers, icons, legalized divorces. Oh, this is, oh, oh heretics deported. Oh, National and route translated Bibles. Oh, we're definitely definitely going to do that. The fewer rebellions you have, the better. Luca has been building it. We can no longer claim that Toron, Torontal would be rightly part of our empire. The diplomatic approach of Adelaide. While growing up in France, Adelaide enjoyed studying people. She often made a game out of trying to predict the actions of the people around her, finding it not only fun, but as the years went by, an increasingly useful habit to keep. Thankfully, moving to the royal court of Venetia has not caused Adelaide to abandon her knack for intrigue. If anything, she has gotten a lot of practice. During some of our recent negotiations with foreign diplomats, these skills have actually proven valuable to the council. Gained 50 diplomatic power. Awesome. Merci beaucoup, Adelaide. Um, all right. Trade. Let's up our, up our trade game a little bit. Awesome. We should probably be investing in these ideas but we're already almost behind the times in diplomatic and military technology anyways so um our levy on mass will have to wait um because i'd rather have a smaller army at militarily equivalent terms than a massive army that's actually behind declining power of the nobility they lose 10 influence actually speaking of let's ask for a contribution from the burgers um, do we want to raise additional levies? We can't do that for another year. Um, can we get any support from the clergy? No. No. And yeah, the burgers would totally love my city of Ragusa. But it's already in a, um, a state. So I, I'd love it even more if it's under my control. Just saying. Um... Army. Oof. Yeah, let's build barracks in Verona and Venice just to increase our manpower. I'm still hoping we can um we can invade something. What about Florence? Nope, they're in a coalition. What about Milan? What about Milan? Um aggressive expansion. I do want to take something this episode, just then I can actually do a history lesson. Because we don't have one yet. I don't have a topic. So I might just add something in at the end. Um, hmm. Hmm. Actually, actually, no, I have an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea. But we'll see. Because if I can take Venice... Um, uh, Venice, I am Venice. If I can take... Protestantism entrenched. There are fewer people to observe Lent. That the that the forty days when any proper Catholic cannot eat meat and is forced to eat fish, the demand for fish is plummeting by minus ten percent. Actually, that gives me a, an idea. In Carn in, in Venice, one of the most famous aspects is Carnival. And Carnival is a result of, you know what? You know what? I'm not going to explain it here. Here's a history introduction. Boop. Masquerade. Paper faces on parade. Masquerade. 
hide your face so the world will never find you. I'm never singing on YouTube again. Though famed for its tolerance of different religions and ethnicities, Republican Venice was still strictly hierarchical. Everybody had a role, and they were expected to stick to it. Except for certain months of the year, from October through late February, when men were allowed to wear masks in the street, giving everyone a certain anonymity and equality. This nullification of social forces peaked during Carnival, the unique role reversal celebration whose roots and soul, though popular throughout the world, are uniquely Venetian. According to legend, the first Carnival, in the modern sense of the term, was spontaneously celebrated in Piazza San Marco in 1162 to celebrate a Venetian victory over the usurper Patriarch of Aquileia, as opposed to the Patriarch of Aquileia in Grado, whom the Venetians still supported as the heir of San Marco. See episode 7 for more info on that story. Over the years, the victory dancer grew into the celebration we know today, albeit with a 200-year reprieve after the Republic's fall to Napoleon. I studied anthropology in university, and one of the more interesting theories I came across was the idea that public and private rituals fulfilled a sort of function, that they served a stabilizing purpose to societies. Without some of these rituals, these societies would collapse. Carnival is clearly one of those rituals. It may seem counterintuitive at first, but the idea is that by relaxing social mores, you actually reinforce them. Though lost to the fog of time, carnivals may have their ultimate origins in pre-Christian festivities that mixed a celebration of spring's rebirth, the exorcism of the dark spirits of winter, and great feasts consuming fatty winter food that would otherwise soon go bad in warming weather. As a liminal time, one foot in winter, one in spring, right on the edge of a long fast when food stores ran low, this period also saw excuses for a significant loosening of civic morality, a last chance to get it out of your system, if you will. The Greeks had semi-private bacchanalia, associated with Dionysius, their god of wine, revelry, and ecstasy, and the Romans had a more public Saturnalia in early December, where slaves dined with masters, dice playing was widespread, social classes dressed as other groups, including masks, and gift-giving was frequent. Shortly after the time of Jesus of Nazareth, the early church fathers debated what to do with such distinctly pagan, anti-Christian celebrations, but eventually they took a page from the Romans' books, and incorporated elements of the festivals into church doctrine, linking the Bacchanalia with Lent. In Venice, Carnival was frequently targeted by the councils, and masked revelers were heavily restricted in what they could do, styles were limited, with wigs and false beards prohibited, they could not enter convents, they could not engage in business ventures while masked, and curiously were even banned from throwing eggshells filled with perfume. I don't understand that one either. After Carnival had been banned under Napoleon, the Italian government brought back the celebration specifically to draw attention to the unique history of Venice. It worked. Today, Carnival is a major tourist draw for the city. Three million visitors, including a young Carhu back in 2000, flock to Venice annually to see the festival. Masks are sold in almost every shop. There are many types of masks, and many of these categories differ between mask shops and historians, but I'm just trying to give you a little bit of an overview on the general categories. The volto is the tight-fitting flat white mask most associated with Venetian carnival. Covering almost all of the front of the head from the chin to forehead, ear to ear, the volto was quite limiting. The wearer could not speak, eat, or drink with it on, but anonymity was preserved, especially when worn with a hat and cape. Conversely, the balto, with its distinct peaked mouth, allowed for much socialization, and was thus quite popular, especially among men. Combined with the cape, it was even the government-sanctioned costume for certain political events, where anonymity was required, but participation in debate was still necessary. Though often associated with Carnival, the Medico della Peste, or Plague Doctor's Mask, wasn't invented until the 17th century by a French physician. He believed that the long nose prevented the doctor from catching the plague when treating patients. He was wrong, but at least he tried. Similarly late arriving to the carnival is the Colombina, the ubiquitous half-mask, often topped with a jester's crown, cat ears, feathers, or a bicorn hat, although some mask shops consider the jester and gato to be their own distinct types of mask. Apparently, the Colombina was the result of a vainglorious actress refusing to wear a full mask that covered the totality of her beautiful features. The Moretta mask was also a later development and only worn by women. A simple circular mask, the Moretta only covered the front of the face, Uniquely, though, this mask was kept in place by the wearer biting a small bit on the reverse, thus prohibiting all manner of speech. Starting in the 16th century, a number of different masks associated with the wildly popular Commedia dell'arte theatre style emerged in Venice and throughout Europe. Most distinct are Arlecchino's furrowed, horned forehead and upturned nose, Pantalone's sorrowful expression and bushy eyebrows, and Zeni's long nose, not to be confused with the plague doctors. 
Carnival is a distinctly Venetian celebration, combining the excesses of the ancient Greeks, the public role reversal of the Romans, the veneration of Christ, all with its origins in a triumph over a rival patriarch. Part pagan, part Christian, part Western, part Eastern. All Venetian. As such, it is hardly appropriate, then, that we celebrate our carnival in the same episode where we overthrow the hierarchical tyranny of the papacy, raising the throne of San Marco to its rightful place in the world. Deus volt, Venezia. Deus volt. All right. fan diddly -tastic. Trust your neighbor. Although citizens are encouraged to show trust and good faith in their exchanges, in reality, the reality in many nations is that it's a risk people cannot afford to take. This, however, is not the case in Venezia. We've successfully stamped out corruption on so many levels in society. People not only trust officials to do their job without the extra help of a bribe, but they also trust each other more in general exchange. The, this general belief in the honesty of others is the very thread from which the fabric of society is woven, and our country is a shining example of it, as stipulated in Protestant teachings. State maintenance, minus 10%. Fantastic. But let us... Oh. We are almost at the point where we can get Condotta Infantry. I suffered casualties. Oh, from transporting them across. Now. Now. Milan. Milano. Mi amici. Um, if we took Milan, Castile and France would both join. The, the Pulpacy would join Milan. Now, um, is Milan my rival? I don't think they are. No, it's Florence. But Florence is lovingly allied with France and Savoy. So, Milan. Let's bring Castile. I assume Castile is no longer at war. No, Castile is no longer at war with the Ottomans. So let's bring France and Castile in. No, we don't need Castile. Let's bring France in on this. And then while we're still at Milan, we declare war on Florence. Actually, hold on. What is our aggressive? Aggressive expansion. Minus 41. Um, minus 58 for Austria. And minus 46 for Czechy. Um, okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Army maintenance up. Forts up. Give us two months to prepare for this. Because in January 1505, we will embrace uh, new military technology. Domenico Portanone is famous for his sharp intellect, and his presence in our court leads a certain grandeur to our name. He is, however, also a firm Catholic and has been allowed to practice his faith as he wishes in order to come here. It would be unthinkable for the Church of Venezia itself to criticize Marco, Marco. I just realized that the first king of Venice is actually Marco. That's brilliant. But in the streets of Venice, there's talk of Domenico Paternone trying to plant subversive Catholic ideas in the head of Marco. Let them talk. They lose 10 church power. Or lose prestige. Our prestige is already pretty, pretty tanked. And the natural scientist Domenico Pordenone leaves your court. Let's let them talk. Let them talk. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. So, January first, fifteen oh five. Boom, men at arms. Now the value of training and experience has always been great on the battlefield. With the advent advent of gunpowder and the tactical changes associated with it and other infantry weapons, came a great demand for units first in these new innovations. As professional armies will, were still far away. This need had to be filled by mercenary units such as Condottieri, Swiss mercenaries, or Landsknechts. A growing class of professional mercenary officers came to live came to live off supplying these regiments to needing states in the middle of the military transition. And we can get Condotta and Landsknecht. We can also get Carrix and Caravals. Development of the Latin sail allowed Carrix to sail much closer to the wind than earlier vessels. Enhanced maneuverability made them superior to other ships. So we're going to have to save up our money to upgrade our fleet. But... Ba -ba -bum. And we're definitely going to go with Condotta Infantry. Now, Condotta is the Italian word for contract. And it was used to describe the mercenary units that fought mostly in Italy for the various city-states. We are in Italy. We're no longer a city-state. We're a kingdom. But still, we're in Italy, so we're going to stick with it. The leaders of the Condotta regiment were called Condottieri. 
The most famous amongst them were Sir John Hawkwood, Francesco Sforza, ruler of Milan. In fact, I think it's his dynasty that's still in Milan. Actually, no, it's Visconti. In our particular history, Sforza doesn't take over. Um, but let's get back to that little info intro. And Bartolomeo Colleoni. Conducto were not only very were not very loyal to their employers, often switching sides because of higher pay. When Condotta fought each other, they also made deals to not harm each other too much, and war in Italy often became a sort of theater. Condotta regiments consisted of armored knights and heavy and light infantry and crossbowmen. The Condotta had a monopoly on warfare in Italy, which meant that they still used old weapons and tactics when the older European armies already had switched to infantry consisting of musketeers and pikemen. Yeah, too bad. I'm going to stick with that. That is fantastic. Forteza di Sant'Andrea. The fort of Sant'Andrea was constructed in 1545 to guard the main entrance to Venice from the Adriatic. The fort was designed by famous architect Michel San Michele. He was probably the only Italian architect in the century with the opportunity to see Greek architecture as he traveled around the Greek possessions of the Venetian Republic. The fortress stood as protection for Venice for over 300 years. What should we do? Build it! Build it, my friends! Local defensiveness plus 25% or gain 50 administrative power? No, build it. Build it. Build it. So yeah, we're just building up um, our army. Firenze is no longer valid rival for Florence, uh, for, for Venice. Does that mean Milan can be? That means Milan can be. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And yeah, I know we just took a loan in order to pay for our fortress, but that's fine by me. Because we've lost the humiliate rival, gained humiliate rival against... Ragusa declared war on Hungary. Interesting. Interesting. Family secret. The first time you brush it off, but when it happens a second and a third time, you do begin to wonder, why are the people laughing at you when they think that you can't hear them? After you've asked around for more than a bit, you finally manage to get an answer out of a chambermaid. It appears that your heir has been running around town in most unchristian fashion, and that your family is now becoming the laughing stock of Europe. Scold him publicly... Or claim strength of air. What is our air's claim strength? Strong. So? He's a buffoon. Deal with it. Now, as soon as this rises up, we will attack Milan. See if we can take anything. Even if it's only, you know... Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to take... Just the aggressive expansion. I don't know if we can take that. If we can take Milan. But, we will see. We will see. Altarkia has been discovered building a spy network, unless, of course, Altarkia is... No. No, Altarkia is not a better people to attack. What about Naples? Uh, they're actually allied with Castile. Okay, so, Milan, diplomacy, declare war. Let's bring France into this. We will lose our alliance with the Popacy, but that's fine. Boom. Now what happens? You're going to have to tune into the next episode of Found Night. I'm Carter the Great Bear of the North. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, and I know you do, please like, please subscribe, please comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Most importantly, have a fantastic day, everybody. And I'll see you all next time in the most serene kingdom. Ciao.